So obviously a while ago I built a cargo pod and the whole purpose of the cargo pod was that I needed to carry extra fuel mainly but then also it went into um, the fact that on a Kit Fox 4 the baggage bay, can't really recall that's a baggage sack, is not that great um, and even though it's rated at 40 pounds it's just merely hung on the airframe with some velcro and put 40 pounds in there and sure as nuts that velcro comes undone and it drops into the control um, into the control arms so that freaked me out it happened to me once I didn't put 40 pounds in even I put about 12 pounds and hit a bit of turbulence one of the velcros undid dropped onto the, the tube on the back it pushes on the um, for the aileron control arms, uh, gave me a bit of a fright, and that that prompted the whole uh, cargo bay story, and then it went into a pod because I didn't want to keep fuel behind me, um, and then recently I decided we are sitting in a situation where we're not allowed to fly our airplanes. Um, what what else can I do to keep me busy and work on it? So, I decided to embark on a full-scale cargo bay exercise. Uh, enlarge the cargo bay, strengthen the cargo bay, and make something that is usable. And that's what we did. So, let's hit it. I'm Nick Holmes. I'm a fueling automation engineer, a voluntary rescue technician, and a passionate aviator. Join me as I take you through learning to fly and onto the adventures of backcountry aviation in South Africa.
super stoked with these. And of course, a good block tie shirt. That, and then, uh, what else we got? find a way onto the plane, definitely find a way onto the plane. So that's pretty cool. Um, these were sent by uh, John Pfaff from Utah, uh, Salt Lake City. He arranged uh, the grip locks with Creighton King and um, he tells me that Creighton threw in the shirt and the decals and an extra pack of, of tires. Um, which is fantastic, it's so cool. Really, really stoked with those. And uh, yeah, can't wait to can't wait to use these. Very um, very appreciative of uh, John and his uh, sending me stuff to help with my builds and that's cool and yeah, appreciate the fact that Creighton um, threw in some extras and yeah, pretty stoked. So Definitely go and get yourself some grip lock tires. Um, this is not a sponsored video, even though these were sent to me um, and I didn't pay for them. Um, this is not sponsored by grip lock, but definitely worth a shout out and definitely support them. I think they make a brilliant product. Uh, this is awesome. This is a great product, um, great quality, and yeah. So get yourself some grip lock tires, support the local guys from the aviation industry and um, these are going to find their way onto my aeroplane somewhere, wingtips maybe, I think they'll look pretty cool on wingtips and uh, I think it's uh, time to get back to the building. So I've been building this um, luggage bay extension and I've been really bad at filming the composite uh, floor panels that I've been making. So this is one of them. This is the one that I did as a single layer. You can see there's gaps in the composite here. But it is this polycarbonate, no, a la, it's polyurethane honeycomb. You can see the honeycombs there with a linen cloth over it that you laminate. Exceptionally, sh exceptionally strong in this orientation here. Um, incredible load bearing capacity, but it flexes down its length. So I went and laminated it. This one I've had to cut down its length to get it to fit in. So I laminated another section on top, did this um, carbon fiber um, Z section a uh, little elbow here, give it some really, really, really good strength, um, and that's great. So there's two of those, those are for 
the section just behind the seat. This one is one of the halves of the rear extension piece. Um, I was just laminating again, laminating the um, just a little ridge in to strengthen it. And this has got quite a nice overlap so that the other board can pop in and rest against here. Other board is underneath all of those bits and pieces. Um, but yep, so I've just I stuck some peel ply on this. It's still a little bit tacky. Um, so I'm waiting for it to cure properly and then I will whip it all off and uh, put it off. This board's got two layers of carbon on. Um, actually this other one here, the other side of that one, that's got, that's a, a twin, a two layer, uh, a two layer layup, two layers with the rib and um, it's pretty, really strong. So I've run out of carbon again, um, we need to go and get another roll. And then I will put a second layer on that, a second layer on that one, and uh, maybe, oh, that's what else I'll, I'll do with it. So these are the two back panels um, behind the seats, and then this one goes sort of over here in my aircraft, about that position. So it's a nice long bay, um, and that one will get a, another, this one will get a, a coat, I think these I'll end up putting single layer, but this one here, the one that goes behind the seat, I'm actually going to cut a window in it and make a tapered box that sits behind the seat, and that will hold all my aircraft books, um, the flight folio, um, my mandatory documents that I have to carry, like ownership certificate, radio license. Um, and maybe I'll make it big enough that I carry that I need to carry the mandatory first aid kit Even though I will be putting in a, my own custom backcountry kit that will go on the side panel in the bay So that you can literally for me or can reach over and pull it off um, But yeah, so this is part one of the luggage bay extension um, Hopefully I'll be able to do another sneak to the airfield and um, fit some of this and get the side panels cut and then our part two will be laminating the side panels, uh, installing it, uh, getting all the fixtures in place and um, working out load capacities. So thumbs up if you liked the video, hit us up with a subscribe if you haven't already and uh, catch you again soon.